So who am I? I am a senior offensive security specialist at leading banks in the Middle East. Uh, I am keen on uh, Active Directory and uh, and the latest uh, evasion techniques. I hold certifications like OSEP, GXPN, OSCP, and so on. I have had multiple zero days. I have previously spoken at Hack in the Box, Shell Call, and Black Hat in the Middle East. Uh, and uh, you can find my work. Uh, I do post something on GitHub, so you can uh, you can probably find some of my stuff on GitHub as well. Yep, and you can follow me on Twitter if you get like. We'll be looking at Active Directory Certificate, and uh, we'll be looking at how to enumerate Active Directory Certificate objects, right? In the uh, and then we'll we will look at how to hunt and exploit the different private escalation scenarios in these uh, templates, such as ESC one, ESC two, ESC four, and ESC eight. And in the end, we'll be looking at mitigations and detections. And uh, towards the end, we'll be looking at uh, the the references uh, and further reading if you'd like. So uh, what what is Active Directory Certificate Services? It is basically the publicly the uh, PKI implementation uh, by the uh, the uh, Microsoft services, and it's, and it's called Active Directory Certificate Services. It can be used for things like smart card authentication, for SQL certificates, for code signing, and for even uh, authenticating users to the Active Directory. So what basically happens is the uh, the clients they send a um, Certificate signing request to a CA server, which signs the issued private keys with its private key, and then the uh, the client gets issued the certificate. Moving forward, let's see how the flow works for this one. Uh, this was taken from the uh, SpectreOps article. So the uh, client generates a public-private key pair, right, uh, and it then tries to uh, send a certificate signing request to the enterprise CA server, and it sends a uh, a request to a template and a template is not is uh, nothing but a blueprint of how the certificate would look like after it, it gets issued basically right and uh, and it would contain uh, things like template name the subject which is the uh, account which is trying to request uh, that particular certificate the eku which means the purpose that uh, this uh, certificate will be issued for right and uh, and then it will go to the uh, enterprise ca server the Enterprise CS server will check uh, uh, if the uh, requested items uh, or the objects uh, in that certificate template are, you know, are uh, aligning with uh, what is configured in that template. And then in the end, it will issue a certificate to the user. So let's see how what the certificate looks like and what uh, parameters it contains, right? Uh, it contains the subject, which is uh, who owns the certificate or the uh, person who has requested the certificate. Then the uh, other important scenario or the uh, parameter name is the subject alternative name, uh, where in the uh, uh, we can uh, define uh, more uh, subjects or accounts uh, for that particular template. And, and uh, we would, uh, in the coming slides, see why this is important. Uh, then it also includes something called as EKU, which, which means that what's the purpose of this uh, certificate? Will it be for code signing, uh, for uh, client authentication, for server authentication, and so on? Right. Uh, so, what are certificate templates? They are like uh, objects in the Active Directory, like uh, computers, OUs, GPOs, right? And we also need to make sure that they have secure permissions and not have open permissions which could be exploited, and uh, we will see how uh, in the coming slides. So this is, that's how a template looks like. Basically, if you see the uh, the template display name is there, the uh, template name is there, uh, the uh, valid uh, uh, period is there, which is, you know, we, we can configure it for one year and so on. And uh, on the right side, we have various extensions, which the uh, template would support and what it would be used for uh, is mentioned down like uh, for uh, secure email for client authentication and so on another important concept which i mentioned earlier is the uh, subject alternative name which uh, basically allows additional entities to be bound to a certificate or additional user accounts to be bound to a certificate and it can be pretty dangerous when it is used with a domain authentication ek there are a couple of ways we can authenticate once we get a certificate. One is uh, with uh, the uh, Kerberos-based authentication, which is the PKI NIT authentication. 
So we uh, request once we have a certificate, we uh, authenticate to the uh, Kerberos and we get a, a, a DGT, right? And that's how we can authenticate via Kerberos. And then uh, if we don't have the capability to authenticate by, via Kerberos, we can also authenticate uh, via LCAPS. And let's look at how do we enumerate uh, the uh, Active Directory Certificate Services. So, uh, uh, since the past, uh, the past, uh, since the past one and a half years, um, uh, multiple tools have come out. Uh, the the most famous one being the uh, certified or exe, right? Uh, which was released by the uh, inspector of steam. And uh, if we run the command uh, cas, it will basically tell us uh, what are the the uh, cas on the uh, on the uh, Active Directory, right? Uh, it will list on all the cas. If we, if we do a find, uh, it would also list down uh, the uh, the uh, templates that have been configured on those uh, on those CAs. Uh, we could also uh, use a uh, lol bin called cert util, which uh, which we can uh, use to list down all the CAs and the templates as well. And we have uh, options existing in uh, Python. As well, uh, if you have a Linux based system in case, uh, then you can easily use uh, Certify. So, uh, how, how do we look for uh, uh, and how do we exploit uh, ESC1 and ESC2 misconfigurations? So, uh, the, the first thing to check is that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, en enrollment rights is uh, configured for low privileged users like uh, the, the domain users, the domain computers, or authenticated users. So if you see this flag configured, the, uh, uh, it is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, one of the steps where we can say, okay, then that may be, may be vulnerable to ESC1. Uh, the next step we would look at uh, is, uh, is the, uh, uh, is the, uh, is the uh, enrollee supply subject option. Right. Uh, if you see that it is configured, we can supply an an, uh, an additional subject to it. And uh, apart from that, we should also see if the uh, if we have an EKU uh, has a client authentication or smart card authentication, and you know, and so on. So uh, if we have uh, any other EKUs in use, then we will not be able to uh, authenticate as a user, basically. Right. So uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, if you see in these uh, certificates, uh, the configuration, right? Uh, if you see the certificate name flag is 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 uh, is, uh, is given as only supply subject. The PK extended usage is marked as type authentication, and the enrollment rights are with domain users, right? Uh, we will. I will have a short demo to show uh, over here. All right. So. Uh, what what I I basically do is uh, I I will reuse uh, a tool called Certify, uh, and uh, we will assume that we have already gained uh, a domain user via phishing or uh, via some other attacks, and uh, we have access to the uh, to, to the internal network, and uh, we will try to list down on the certificate templates which are vulnerable, and it will uh, give to us certificate templates. And over here, we see that uh, the uh, six ES servers are are, uh, are vulnerable to ESC8, right? And we have a template, which is called the one template, where we see it is mentioned as vulnerable to ESC1, right? And why? Because of the fact that we have a certificate name flag, which says the, uh, the uh, and, and only can supply the subject, uh, the extended key, Usage is flag authentication and the enrollment rights are with domain users. Okay. So let's see how we can exploit it. What we basically do is that we request a certificate by requesting an additional by requesting an additional uh, subject, which would be in our case uh, the machine account of the domain controller, which is uh, the uh, Avengers DC Marvel. Right. So uh, we have we have successfully requested a certificate with uh, with the EFX or the certificate of Avengers DC machine account, and let's see if we can authenticate to it. I'm 
yes. So we have successfully authenticated through the domain controller uh, with uh, the uh, with that certificate, and we have successfully done uh, the the hash of the domain controller, right? Uh, and with this, we can move forward and uh, and do an NTDS uh, dip dump or uh, or any uh, or any credits that we'd like on the domain. You could uh, also use RubyS to uh, to uh, pass the certificate once you have got the certificate as well uh, via execute assembly. So yeah, so these are the tool sets that that were used uh, on uh, the uh, Windows system. We we could use certify RubyS and Mimic ads, and from the Linux system, we could use certify. Uh, this is what it looks like. We had we have recently seen in the demo. Yep. Uh, so that was on ESC1. So now let's look at what do we look uh, into uh, ESC4. So uh, we would basically look for uh, permissions where low privileged users like domain users have been given uh, additional rights like uh, the, the uh, right owner permission, the right access permission, or the right property permission or control. Right. So, uh, so, so if uh, you uh, or the uh, or, uh, or if a local domain group has access to these to uh, to these uh, templates with these permissions, then you could uh, potentially uh, change these permissions uh, or the uh, certificate settings and and make it vulnerable to ESC one, and then you could exploit it uh, moving forward. Right. So uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, if you see uh, the uh, the enrollment rights are not mentioned over here. And we see that uh, the full control principles are with uh, the authenticated users, which is uh, the uh, which is uh, uh, any user on the domain, basically, right? And we see that uh, we we basically see that uh, uh, none of the configurations we we exploited in uh, in ESC one are present. So we uh, uh, change. Uh, these certificate template permissions, right? Uh, with the help of tools in uh, Linux called uh, uh, called mod certify, uh, cert template by with, with this tool we can easily change the certificate permissions. Uh, yeah, and we we have additional tools on uh, in the windows as well, which is the, uh, which is stand in, right? We can uh, we can uh, change the permissions uh, with stand in as well. Uh, so. Here you have seen that we have uh, uh, added the uh, PK extended key usage to client authentication because it it uh, it uh, was not there before, and if we don't have this permission, we will not be able to authenticate with the certificate, right? Uh, next, we will uh, add the flag, which is the uh, which is the uh, uh, which is the uh, and and supply subject. Uh, and then we will uh, give our uh, account uh, rights to enroll to the certificate. So uh, I have I have used Sharp View uh, since since I had uh, uh, edit rights to this template. I have used Sharp View to give me uh, to to uh, uh, basically give me rights to enroll to the certificate. And in the end, this is how it looks like. I've changed uh, the uh, client authentication to true. I have uh, changed the uh, supply subject parameter to true, and I have uh, and I'm also right. So uh, I would then use this as uh, ESC one and exploit it as I've shown you uh, previously. Uh, what else to look for uh, is to look for uh, the, uh, uh, the the ESC eight where. Uh, if you have an HTTP endpoint running, uh, uh, it uh, uh, it is vulnerable to uh, to uh, relay based attacks, basically, right? So uh, if you uh, run your uh, certified of exe or any tool, so it would uh, it would uh, be able to identify uh, these endpoints, right? Uh, all you need to do is uh, is uh, you know uh, run uh, your petit portum exploit. Which would uh, which would coerce the authentication, uh, the uh, the uh, the domain controller uh, authentication to to your attacker IP, and then you can use uh, 
NTLM relay to uh, relay this authentication from the uh, uh, from uh, your uh, attacker IP to the CS server, right? And hence, we will have a base sixty four encoded certificate, uh, which we could use to pass it and uh, obtain domain admin privileges, right? Yes. Uh, so some some more more info, right? So uh, so now certificate templates can also be used in a stealthy way uh, to to uh, maintain persistence, right? Uh, so what can basically happen is, uh, is uh, if you don't have the credits of user account, uh, you can um, you can request a, a certificate for that particular user, and uh, and then that certificate is 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 actually valid. Uh, you you can authenticate with that certificate even if the user changes his or her password. So that is a pretty cool thing. Uh, and apart from what I have shown, so uh, it is always good to review uh, all the users and groups that have the rights to enroll, uh, because uh, tools like Certify they uh, they they normally check for uh, groups like domain users and so on, and they may not. Uh, check for any custom groups uh, which which may have the rights to enroll, right? So uh, you can uh, run just the find command and dump all the templates and uh, uh, and uh, and if you find any groups which are quite open, you know, uh, which have like thousands of users, even the uh, so the uh, the uh, attack surface is big over there as well. So you could potentially uh, compromise the server which is in the group, uh, you know, and and then perform the attacks. As well. Uh, all right. So now to to uh, mitigate uh, the ESC one and ESC two, we should make sure that the supply in request setting uh, in the subject name is actually enabled, right? Uh, and uh, and if uh, and we should also uh, and uh, and if the above setting is not possible, we should make sure that the uh, manager approval is in place. Well, then we have one more level of check. Uh, so that you know uh, the uh, the uh, malicious templates are not issued, um, uh, and we should remove any low privileged users from the uh, rights to control. Uh, in ECS in ESC two, uh, it is uh, almost similar to ESC one. Uh, we should so uh, in this case make sure that uh, the uh, any purpose EKU is removed. On ESC four, we should ensure that. Uh, all these right permissions, all the full control permissions are removed. On on ESC eight, we should make sure that uh, we, we should disable NTLM authentication and we should uh, uh, make sure to enable HTTPS uh, service running with the uh, EPA enabled. Uh, on the uh, on the detection side, uh, we should ensure that all the CA audit logs uh, are enabled on the CA servers. We should also make sure that uh, the success and failure logging uh, is uh, is enabled as well. Uh, one good thing is that uh, if uh, if you have uh, NTI uh, in your uh, uh, in your uh, network, uh, it has the potential to detect these malicious uh, this these uh, maliciously crafted certificates. Uh, and if you don't have NDI, uh, uh, the, the the logs uh, from uh, the uh, the CA which are which which are generated are 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 not quite sufficient for uh, the uh, the blue teamers or the SOC team to create alerts on these. Right. Uh, these were the references that I have used. Uh, it was mostly uh, the uh, certified pre-owned uh, uh, research paper by the team, and these were the tool sets that I utilized in the demo. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Achieve your next level of skills with training courses at AntiSiphonTraining.com.